Hey guys, Chris here with a Drill Into The Fall video for you. In this video, I have made myself a pair of frankly gigantic, but very very strong sawhorses for me to use as a workbench going forward. First things first is having a plan. This is a printout of a 3D model that I made in SketchUp. Having the model really helped me with measurements and knowing the purpose of each piece that I cut. So step one, making the legs. First thing was to make the legs, as everything is built from them. I've chosen a 15 degree angle for my saw horses, so the first cut is really simple. Make a 15 degree cut that wastes as little material as possible. Then I'd measure back the length that I needed for the length of the legs. Then I had to make a parallel cut. From now on, I just use this first leg as a template for the rest. I would use the very first off cut that I made so that the second leg could be angled as well. Now it's just a case of repeating this another three times so that I had all four sets of legs. Step two, making the top. The six by two wood was cut to set the width of the sawhorse. I chose to use a width of 75 centimeters. This was based on the fact that the six by two material also came in a one and a half meter length. So cutting it straight in half was very easy. Step three, cross supports. The cross supports could go between each V of legs and are the same length as the top support. This was cut from 4 by one material. Step 4, hinges. Hinges will be put in for each pair of legs. This will allow the sawhorses to collapse and take up much less space while they're in storage. The hinges are placed on the wood, the holes marked and then pre-drilled. Using the included screws with the hinges, they're then screwed firmly into place. The process is repeated for the mating leg. Step 5 Notching the tops. Because of the hinge design I had chosen and bought, I had to notch the top piece so that it would sit flat on top of the legs. I just used a drill to do this. Step 6. Cross supports. The cross supports are now prepared by pre-drilling them. I measured in half the thickness of the legs. Since I'm using 2 inch thick leg material, I measured in 1 inch. I marked and then drilled. I then used the first pre-drilled piece of wood as a template to save marking up every single piece. I just drilled through the holes I'd already made, and this was repeated for all the cross braces. I decided that I wanted the legs about a third of the way up from the ground. So I measured this point and marked it across the legs so I could easily line up the top of the cross brace. Using the holes in the cross brace and the line I'd already drawn, I could make a simple small pre-drill into the leg by going straight through the cross brace holes. Then I finished off the pre-drill now that I know where the hole should be. Get it. I'm going to finish off the pre-drill. The cross supports are now populated with all their screws. I found it easiest to lay the legs on the, on the floor and then screw the cross braces down into them. 
then add securely the other side. And now that's one side of the horses made. I did try doing this with the horses stood up. Don't bother, it's just so difficult. At least with them laying down, you can push and put pressure straight into the ground. Hey guys, so the last thing we need to do now is secure the top edge onto the top of the saw horses. Step 7. Secure the tops. To secure the saw horse tops, I knew that I wanted to drill down through the top and into the legs. So I measured the thickness of the wood, then measured in half of this and scored a line. Now I know that my screw is going to be somewhere along that line. I then worked out where a third and two thirds along this line is from the edge nearest that I wanted securing down. This one third and two third point is where my screws will be. So I marked these points and pre-drilled straight through the top and into the leg and then I screwed straight through and to secure the top onto the legs. This was then repeated for the other end. Step 8, sit back, admire, the job is finally done. As you can see, these saw horses are pretty large, but I am myself a very large person. I'm 6 foot 4, so I've set these about 1 meter 15 tall, so they're a good height for me to work on. The plan is to use something like this as a workbench, so things like saws, Circular saws, mitre saws are all at the right height for me.